In this week's edition of the Big Three, I talk about emotion, uh, what the players are going through, what the parents, coaches, umpires, fans, what we're all going through, you know, during the course of a game. And uh, the emotion that you feel is completely normal. There's excitement, there's sadness, there's anger, there's happiness. There's a lot of different things we can feel through the course of a game. Um, players are out there, they want to make the, the best impression. They want to make all the plays that they can. Um, and then something happens. They, they make a mistake or, or something bad happens. The other team scores or maybe, you know, the other team wins. So those players, they, they feel different things. And it's completely normal. It, it's the, the perfectly normal human thing to, to get sad when something bad happens or to be mad. But understanding we have to move on from that because there's another play, there's another game, there's another tournament, there's, there's always something else coming. And we don't want the emotion from one play to affect the outcome of another play. So we get into that and a couple other different things here in this episode. Check it out. All right, moving on to emotions. Um, emotions aren't just the kids. Emotions are the coaches. Emotions are the fans, the parents. Um, um, emotions are are everywhere in, in, in youth sports. And there's been a rash. I don't even know if rash is the right word. There has been a spotlight put on parents and coaches in the stands and it's amazing to me how much we as parents are either trying to live out our youth days or something. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Um, we're beating up the umpires. There's already a shortage. And I heard it this week. I, I went to, um, I was in Myrtle beach this, this past weekend watching uh, the triple crown. I was able to, uh, to watch quite a bit of 14 U ball. I had uh, both of my daughters are playing on separate teams, so I was able to 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 watch, I think, all of their games. I don't think they played at the same time, but once. But I was able to see um, a lot of 14U ball, and then I was able to go watch uh, some of the coaches, some of the teams that I know uh, play 12U once they move over to Grand Park. And emotions get high. I get it. I understand. It's hot. It, it's human. Um, when I was coaching – and I was on the sideline, I always made a point to no matter what, it was just something in me that if there was a situation that I was hot about, I wouldn't allow my parents and my fans to get overly excited over a bad call or that we thought was a bad call. Um, I would always talk in between innings to the umpires or I talked after. Now, of course, I would challenge plays. I mean, all coaches do. But there's a right way and a wrong way uh, to do that um, as coaches. And there's a right way and a wrong way to act if we don't like a call as parents in in the stands. Because I can guarantee you every child in that dugout is embarrassed if they can pick out your sound, your voice, and you're the one yelling, come on, Blue. Or you're in some way you're standing out above the crowd. They don't want you to. I guarantee you, every kid does not want their mom or dad, grandma, aunt, uncle, sister, brother, whoever, to be arguing balls and strikes, yelling at the umpire, because umpires have been yelled at so much that they are no longer afraid to engage the fan, engage the parents on the sidelines. I saw it this weekend. So, they're they're taking up for themselves. They're human beings, and they're tired of it. And I, I go back to this: is a couple of years ago, uh, I talked to uh, an umpire that his daughter played for me, and we would have conversations. And he would tell me some stories. And, and one story that always stuck out to me was, if you're sitting behind the plate as a parent, which you, you shouldn't. But if you're behind the plate and you're watching balls and strikes, no matter what, you don't have the angle that that umpire has. You don't have the strike zone that he's looking for. So you don't know what's a strike or what he's going to call a strike and what he's going to call the ball. It could have been a strike earlier in the day, another umpire on the same field, or it could have been that exact same umpire. And the, the strike zone, for whatever reason, has changed. So, 
if we're asking where's that at blue or you just called that blue or whatever it's not good so this umpire tells me the same parents every time that team shows up he knows where that parent's going to be at so to break the ice to get that parent off of his back he goes over there before the game starts. He said, hey, it's good to see you again. And they start, you know, talking back a little bit of banter. And to break the ice with a guy, he says, hey, look, man, I know you're probably a better umpire than I am. Um, I know you probably have a better angle of the, of the plate than I do. Uh, you probably know more rules than I do. Um, but if you would let me take care of this one, and then after the game, we can talk about it. And then you can tell me all the calls that I missed. The parent, he kind of laughed it off. And, you know, that was kind of it. After the game, the parent came over there, reached out to him and uh, was talking to him and said, you know what? I didn't know how obvious it was. You know, I just thought it was a part of the game, the heckling and stuff like that. But he thanked that umpire, umpire for, for bringing it up to him like that. And he promised him that it would he would never be like that again. So it's just, it's like little things that umpires are human beings, but it's the story that it will always stick to me is umpires are going to be cordial. They're going to be nice. They're not just angry people. And then there are the ones that for whatever reason, just like in life, we they're just, they're, they're ornery. They're, they're angry folks. And it is what it is. So as parents, we got to do better controlling our emotions. How many times have you seen in a game, in a tournament somewhere to where a mama or a daddy or a coach or a parent or something has showed their butt and embarrassed the kid and now that kid's in the dugout crying and then got to go play the field in just a minute? Or they're on the field, you're the parent screaming and hollering about a call that you're not going to change. And that kid is out there, the spotlight's on them because all those girls on the field also know that Tyler is Peyton's daddy and he's showing his butt by arguing calls with the umpire and he's not even a coach. So now that puts my kid on the spotlight and makes her feel bad. That young guy ain't going to be able to feel the ball with the balls coming hit to her. So as parents, we got to help our kids control their emotions. Now, on the other side of this, our kids are going to have emotions on the field. I sent out a tweet um, not too long ago um because it, it's fascinating to me it's a, it's a topic that that um I, i'll say i study it um i try to find out as much information i can about the adolescent mind the preteen mind the teenager mind so that i can help them control their emotions the best that they can because a lot of times it just they, they have to have that emotional outbreak learn from it then because we can't tell them hey this is going to happen i need you to control it. Um, so as a dad, two daughters that, that play a uh, kid pitch and then, and then one that, that's coming up through it. There, so there's a wide range of emotions that I've experienced as a dad. Um, the kids are going to get angry, get mad, get sad, uh, feel down. Um, I don't want to say depressed, but they, 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 they shell up. They, they, they clam up when they make a mistake. And the reason that they do that is because they're on the main stage. Everybody's following the ball when it gets hit. So if a girl boots one, of course, their shoulders are going to slap. They're going to put their head down for a second. Um, now, how long that goes, that's up to the kid. Um, but it happens. We have to let them live in that emotion for a couple seconds. And then we have to let them know that it's okay to have that emotion. I want you to have that emotion because you're trying your hardest. If you didn't have that emotion and you just said, oh, shucks, oh, well, and so-and-so will get it. We don't want that emotion. <laughs> we, want to, we, we want them to care about that mistake um, so it makes them work hard and you know, life. But we have to let them own that mistake. We have to let them own that emotion um, because that's that drive that makes them want to be better. So it's going to happen. Um, now, if it goes on and, it, and it, it goes like too far, if we see a kid like throw a glove down or, or they strike out and they throw a bat or a helmet in the dugout, you know, that's when it needs to be addressed right then. And hopefully you have a strong minded coach that that can handle that. 
but we need to understand the emotions that they have on the ball field when something negative happens to them. It's okay. Um, you know, I used to get embarrassed by it quite a bit when it would happen because I, I looked at it in, in a way that it's like, oh man, they know that's my kid. And it's like, how can he let his kid do this or do that? But then I, you know, I kind of started thinking about it. Well, it's not just my kid. It's not just, you know, her kid. It's not just their kid. All kids go through this. So as parents, let them have their emotions and, and tell them that you're going to, you know, face failure. You, you know, they chose a game that if you fail seven out of 10 times, you're still a pretty good hitter. Um, if you have a fielding percentage, it, you know, you could miss 10 balls, but you have a, a 90% fielding position. You miss 10 out of a hundred, 90% is pretty good. Um, so they're going to fail and, and it makes them, you know, on a spotlight. Now we'll talk pitchers and catchers briefly here with the emotions. Uh, pitchers are a different breed. Okay. You got pitchers that are high emotion. They, um, <laughs> it, it's, it's tough. Um, it's tough to pitch. It's tough to be the only one in that circle. Um, as a pitcher, you got to control everything. And if you throw a ball, it's not the end of the world. If you strike someone out, it's not the greatest thing in the world. So there's a happy medium somewhere. Um, if you do have a, a pitcher that, you know, that you're working with, <clears throat> let them have that emotion on the mound. Let them, let them go through that. Um, as they mature, they'll get a little bit, you know, wiser in how to control that emotion because it's spent energy. Um, if you watch College World Series, you had a wide range of girls that are just stone faced and you couldn't shake it. It didn't matter if it was a, um, a ball four or if it was a three pitch strike. Um, they didn't change their emotion. You would see some excitement, but you would never see them down. And, and those girls are strong and, and that's that's them. That's how they are. Uh, you have the other ones that you could it, they would wear every pitch. You could see it on their face. You could see it in their body language. They would try to hit a spot up, wouldn't give it to them. And you would see them. They would slump. They would come down and say, for real? So our girls at this age that we have, doesn't matter if they're eight, doesn't matter if they're all the way up to 16, 17, they're going to emulate what they see. So you got the Jordy Balls of the world that are super emotional on the mound. Um, you could have, you know, Keely Richard who is very animated and really gets her team to feel the emotion that she has. Uh, you got Valerie Cagle. That's more stonewall. So as, as those pitchers, you know, they're going to pick who they like and they, they're going to, you'll see them do the same stuff. Um, as they watch the college world series, you'll see every girl in the field is communicating how many outs there are. They do that. And you'll, you'll hear them uh, two down and they're, they, they have no emotion in it. They're, they're defeated somewhere. Or you'll hear them, they'll be excited when they, they holler out two down or where the play is going and stuff. So all of that's emotions. We try to guide them to the positive side of emotions. But, you know, just like everything in life, we try to guide them and then, and then we correct it as we go. It's hot. They're sweaty. They've been beat up all day. They, they get no credit for it. And that's the catchers. Okay. Catchers. They're a different breed. So you have the, you know, you have the team, you have your pitchers, and then you have your catchers. Catchers are a different breed. The catchers have to deal with all the crap. Um, a pitcher misses their spot. We're looking, <laughs> we're looking up and away, and she buries one down and in, and it skips to the, the backstop. The first thing, parents, fans, coaches, hey, we got to block it up back there. Okay. Well, no one says, hey, you got to hit your spot. <laughs> so um, you know, we hear it every weekend a thousand times. If you hear it once squeeze, you got to squeeze it, man, that young and behind the plate knows to squeeze the ball. They, they, they want to squeeze the ball. Trust me. Um, but when you got them catching warmups, you got them catching before the game, you got to catch them during the game and they've caught three games that day or whatever, you know, there's going to be a couple balls that pop out. You hope that it's 
nobody out or no nobody on when it happens. Um, but it's going to happen. And if it didn't happen in these big time moments when they're playing 10 u 12 u 14 u ball, they're not going to know how to respond to it when it happens at the showcase level or the collegiate level. You got to let them have their emotion now. You got to let them go through it now. And it's got to be okay for them to go through it now. You know, we, we as parents, and I'm guilty of it as coaches, as a parent, you know, we think that they, we can't let them make mistakes. The mistake is the worst thing. We, we can't let them fail. We don't want to see them fail. And I get that. Trust me. I, 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 I get it. We don't want to see our kids fail. But if they don't fail, it's on some level. I'm not talking about just have a just a complete stinker. I'm not talking about that. But if they don't strike out in a big moment, how are we going to know how they respond and come back from that at their next at bat if they don't do it before? Yeah, I talked about big moments. I think it was yesterday, the day before. I talked about big moments. It was like these, you know, we put it in our mind as a culmination. And we look at it as, oh, it's the, it's the triple crown or it's this national tournament or it's that national tournament. And we build up all this emotion towards it. We have all these feelings that are going to it. I've got to, you know, the, the, as I'm talking as, as a player, you know, we, we got to perform. We, we, you know, I can't screw up. Um, you know, I got I to gotta do my best. And either you win it or you lose it. You can go either way here. Um, that moment's over. You know, we can't look at it as a culmination of a career. At some point, the career will end. You will, you will stop. The playing days will come to an end at some point, whether you're 98 years old or you stop playing when you're 12 and you go play volleyball. At some point, that there's another day. There, there's, there's a, that next tournament's coming, that next practice, that next, you know, bat lesson that you have by yourself. The next time you, you're just throwing a ball up in the air. So it's not a culmination point. To me, it's not. It, it's more of like a progress report. You know, you get a couple of these a year, um, especially playing softball, and I'm sure other sports do the same too. But, you know, it, it's, a, it's a progress report to kind of see where you're at. Last year, last year at this time, uh, we didn't even qualify for this tournament. So now we're here. Let's take it from this point forward. Okay, last year we, we, we didn't make this tournament. We didn't qualify for it. But now we're here. And we're playing it. Let's see how good we can do. Let's let's bracket this tournament as this is the highest competition we've faced, or so it would seem. Just look it on paper. We don't know who's here. I mean, names are names. I mean, you could be the whatever fireflies, you know, just because it's oh, it's a Virginia something 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 07 team doesn't make them better, you know what I mean? So, um, just understanding that this big tournament it it's a big moment absolutely but it's somewhere you can kind of look at and see you know where did i come from where did i start where you know where am i at now how did i perform against this level of pitching um how did i pitch against this level of hitting you know this speed as a catcher how am i dealing with the speed on the base pass you know don't look at it like well that's it that's the that's the last one that's the big tournament of the year because next week you're playing somewhere else in, in a month, you got another big moment, big tournament. That's not a culmination because the last one wasn't a culmination. You have something else coming. So use these big tournaments, use these big moments. Maybe it's a tryout. Maybe it's um, going from my first year playing school ball, or I'm going from, I, I played on this team. The team is disbanding. I've got to find a new team and I'm going to try out. You know, it is a big moment. But you're not culminating your career up until that point, and then it's starting over. No, I mean, everything is kind of coming coming together. It's just like your schoolwork. Every few weeks, you're getting a progress report. You could have had a couple of big tests. And, you know, during that time, or, you know, you, you could have finals. It, yeah, it, it may be, you know, culminating this grade. But as far as education is concerned, it's not the culmination of your education. It kind of is a progress report. Okay. This is where I was at when I graduated school. Here I'm going to college or here I'm continuing my education wherever else. So on the ball field, on competition, understand, take it for what it is. This is a big one. 
And I want to make sure I mark this. This is how I did it this one. So the next time I get to the same point or something very similar to this, I want to be able to take the two and compare them and see where I'm at. All right. Got any questions about that? We'll touch on emotions again at the end. Moving on to warm up and recovery. I saw this this past weekend. So uh, talking to a good buddy, Heath Miller, um, after this, this past tournament, um, I talked to him on the way home and I told him what I was doing with uh, kind of going with the podcast and, and kind of going with these Zoom meetings and, and uh, just getting some information out there. Um, we had talked about it, like three things that stuck out to me. And uh, of course it was playing time. Um, because of the time um, in the games going from an hour and a half to an hour. And then a lot of emotion all over the place. I mean, I, I saw um, the Santa Fe Inferno coach just wouldn't give it up. And the umpire gave him chance after chance after chance after chance to both go, just go get in the dugout. He's not even kicking you out. Go, go to the dugout, man. Wouldn't go in the dugout. So the parents started feeding off his energy. He ended up getting kicked out. And luckily, enough people were, they, were able to talk to him to get him to, to leave the facility um, without having the cops call. But those parents, you know, here I am sitting in the middle um, watching these two teams play. And, and the, the call he was wanting was, was nuts. Um, <laughs> it was a ball hit directly up the middle of the pitcher's head. Girl around in second base, he thought – interfered with the shortstop who never made a play on the ball um, but said that you know those two runs score but there's interference in this and that just wouldn't let it die but anyway i'll move on from that all right as we know emotions run wild on the field whether it's a player a coach fans parents it doesn't really matter anything can spike the emotion and it seems like everybody just kind of feeds off of the emotion you know if the, the tone is set and it, the game is going to be chippy. The girls are like that. The coaches are like that. The umpires get like that too. So the best way to do it is to kind of check your emotion at the door. Understand we're watching youth sports. Coaches understand, hey, we're out here. We're coaching young girls, young ladies that are, you know, doing something that's supposed to be fun. If we can't control our emotions and be able to say, hey, you know what? This is a game. It's all for fun. Um, we're, we're trying to make the best of it. And if we can't do that, then maybe we're, we're not in the right spot. And as far as the players are concerned, they got to understand they can have their emotion, but they also got to, you know, move on from it. It's completely normal to be upset with yourself if you make a bad throw. But that's a far cry from letting that bad throw just destroy the rest of the game, not only for you, but for your team. So as parents, let's talk to our kids help them understand their emotion let them under, let them understand that that is normal to have but also it's okay to move on from it we don't need to dwell on it so thank you guys if you like this type of stuff make sure you share it with a friend and when you do you tell them you love them